Hello, if you've been watching any of my videos over the last year or so, you'll probably know that I'm not very fussy when it comes to the final colouring of a plane. I've never really bothered to paint any of them. Um, the first thing is to make it fly nicely, and then secondly, if you can make it aesthetically pleasing as well, that's great. Aesthetically pleasing meaning just the shape of it, the, the actual form, the 3D shape, you know. Um, but the actual final look of the colour, I'm not too fussy about. But I did read somewhere that over a long period of time, UV exposure from the sun can damage the fiberglass skin surface. And I, I don't think it's the glass itself, it's the epoxy that gets damaged. And it becomes less adherent to the surface that it was stuck on, something like that. Anyway, so that's what got me interested in thinking about painting some of these planes that I've been making, because you put quite a bit of work into making them. It would kind of suck if you came back a year later and they were all just sort of ratty and falling apart. So I've been doing quite a bit of testing over the last sort of four months or so. You can see a bunch of it here. And this is not going to be anything revelatory or groundbreaking to people who are familiar with paint. Um, so those people are probably going to go, well, duh, what did you expect kind of reaction. So this video is not for you. Um, but I just thought that before I throw out all my test pieces, I would at least uh, share what I've discovered as a newbie coming into this and how it all went and what I'm going to do from this point onwards. So let's just start with the first things that I tried, which were these paints that I've had all the while. These are enamel, um, obviously brush on paints, and I found that they work quite well on the bare foam. Oh, so <laughs> before I start, the only two things that I'm concerned with covering or painting on in this video is fiberglass surface like I have on my plain wing skins and the bare foam because they're quite different and I had read somewhere you know how epoxy doesn't stick well to itself after it's cured so if you let it cure you need to sand it off to make a nice surface to stick the next layer of epoxy on and I read somewhere on the net that that was a similar thing with painting so paint would not stick well to epoxy now I can't remember where I read that and I'm starting to think that that might have been wrong um, but anyway that was another thing that I decided to experiment with and I may have been making this into more of tr trouble than it was worth, but um, anyway, <laughs> back to these enamels. They work very nicely on the bare foam, that's this here, and they cover it nicely, Color, they fill the colour nicely, that is, the, like there's no uh, colour from the foam showing through much. That one on the left there is silver, it's not looking very good on camera, there we go, it's a bit better, uh, but it looks quite good in person. And here's a fiberglass skin surface, now it doesn't look so great here because you can see that it's been brushed on and it's a bit messy. This is just one coat. Uh, again, the silver looks pretty nice there. Uh, so my next experiment was to get some spray paint because brushing stuff on, while it does look okay here, uh, the white doesn't look so flash with just one coat. Uh, while it works nicely, it's a lot of work and um, this effect here is not very nice. So I got these two here. This is a, well you can see what they are there, and I sprayed those onto these two pieces as tests. Now this piece here, this is the one that I used the perforated release film on, and you can see the sort of dimply bits there. So I'm not sure if that had something to do with it, but uh, this is the plastic coat, or oh, that one, and this is like two coats and it just looks absolutely terrible, like it didn't stick. You can see it's all patchy. Um, so spray as I might, I just couldn't get it to stick very well, uh, like fill in the colour very well, I mean. And you can see that the surface has also gone a bit sort of, um, where the glue joins are, it's protruding a little bit. So I think somehow it's managed to get behind the foam maybe and dissolve, I mean behind the glass, and dissolve the foam a little bit. It's kind of what it feels like, but I can't think how it would do that. Anyway, this one here, colour filled in a lot nicer. This is the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer. So this one, the colour filled in a lot better, but somehow this has also managed to kind of ruin the surface. Like, it's actually lifted up a bit. It wasn't like that before I painted it. See this bit that's kind of gone all crinkly? Um, but anyway, the colour filled in alright, but you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to do that, really, would it? It looks terrible again. So this sort of reinforced what I had read somewhere on forums that painting directly onto fiberglass was going to be a problem. So that was actually the middle of last year, sometime. So fast forward to about three months ago, 
when I had this plane and I decided that this plane wasn't worth trying to fix or get flying so this became a test piece for some painting and I tried the enamel paint on there again it's orange now and again it doesn't look too great but I thought I'd try some more spray paints so I got these ones here two nasty cheap ones on the left there three dollars I think for that one on the on the far left there quick color uh, and then these ones here the squirts paint and prime I got those mainly because I saw that they were the White Knight brand, which is those ones over there, and I, I quite like those ones, so I thought I'd give them a try. And when I sprayed those onto this surface, uh, that's the white there, and the black, which has been covered by some grey, but the black looked quite nice before I got the grey on there, um, it worked beautifully. And I thought, well, that's really kind of strange, because this was terrible. And... The only difference, well there's actually two differences, one is that I used the perforated release film on this so it's got that sort of dimply effect, but also this was the vacuum bagged stuff. These two pieces were bagged and so the resin on there is probably less overall coverage on the surface than there is on this. So this was just a plain layer of glass that was laid down, no vacuum bagging or nothing. And it worked really quite nicely. Um, Actually, this is painted over the uh, enamel, and I just tried a bit of sellotape there to see how that worked. It worked pretty nicely, actually. I also tried this the other way around, um, that is spraying down the white first, and then masking off a little bit of area to, uh, to put the line on, and then brushing the line on like this. And they both work okay, but this one I found that you get a little bit rougher edges because the brush bristles are able to poke underneath the tape a little bit. I think that's how that happened. Uh, so if anything, you want to be doing the spray as the last step when you're making lines like this, I think. But again, I forget um, exactly which paints. Uh, I think most of this white here that turned out really nice is the White Knight's Squirts. And I became quite fond of those paints there. And I used those to paint Home Slice 2 over there. Of course Home Slice 2 originally did not have any fiberglass on the middle section, it was only the wings that were fiberglassed. So I <laughs> I put fiberglass all over the fuselage, like the central section as well, and then painted that. And along the way I struck a bit of an issue, which is what we're going to look at on this piece here. At the same time I also painted this, this is Home Slice three wing. I found that while some colors were fine to fill in and block the, you know, fill in the color nicely, like the red and the black were very good, the white just wasn't really doing it too well and again it's a little bit hard to see on camera maybe but you can see the lines from the slices in the wings and because this is white I guess it just didn't really block that out very much and it actually doesn't look too bad from what I'm looking at here on the camera screen but if you hold it up to the light, uh, uh, this wing is quite thin too, which doesn't help. Uh, but if you hold it up to the light, you can see those stripes quite clearly. Uh, so I didn't like that, and I didn't really want to be putting too many coats on. This is two coats of white, and it still looks like that. So then I discovered, or I re remembered, something called primer. Now this is where the experts are going to go, what, uh, what an idiot this guy is, what's he thinking? Um, but for some reason it never occurred to me why primer is usually grey. And this is not because I'm stupid, it's just because it never, I never really thought about it. I, I had of course seen that most of the time when people are doing undercoats and primer, it's almost always grey. And now finally I just sort of clicked why it's grey. And the reason is that if it's grey, it'll block out stuff like that underneath quite nicely. Um, but it's not too dark that when you put white or some other lighter color over the top of it, it's gonna be difficult to cover the gray. So it's just sort of an in-between color. Um, and anyway, <laughs> so my next experiment was to get these ones. I'm a little bit suspicious that these two on the left are exactly the same thing. <laughs> they seem to be exactly the same. Uh, and if you look at the label there, a lot of the like marketing guff on the label is kind of the same as well. And I also got this uh, British Paints Spray Easy uh, Paint and Prime as well. Now I had a very very nice discovery with the primer. Um, until now everything 
that came in a spray can that I tried would do this to the foam. It just eats it away. This is supposed to be white. This was, uh, I think the S there means it's the squirts. It's the uh, White Knight squirts. And when you put a fairly decent coat on there, not only does it not go white, <laughs> it eats away and makes a horrible mess of the surface. And CS, this one's actually worse. I think that's that one there, color spray. And it's slightly worse, but none of them were any good. Just goes horrible. Uh, this is the, the paint can enamel. So that's, that's that one, white. And that, like we saw earlier, this does not do anything to the surface it just, uh, of the bare foam. It just colours it, although not very well, being white. So anyway, back to the primer. Um, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that both of these two paints there on the left did not eat the foam at all. Um, not that one. So if we look here, the foam there is perfectly fine. Actually, this flat surface here is a better way to check it because that was, we know that was supposed to be flat when it started. Uh, this one's hot wire cut, we can't really tell too much exactly what that's supposed to be like. Um, but these two, yeah, basically that's the Painter's Touch one there, and this is the 2X one there. They seem to be exactly the same from what I can tell. Unfortunately though, when I tried to spray another paint on top of that, even though the primer being underneath it did not eat the foam. Somehow spraying over the top of the primer did again eat into the foam. Not quite as much, but still more than is acceptable I would say. So that was kind of a bummer. <laughs> uh, what's that? Oh, oh, excuse me, that's British Paints Spray Easy. That's this one. So that one there also ate the foam. Excuse me, that's that's just that's just those ones. Here we go. This is spraying over the top of primer and this is British Paint Spray Easy Yellow there yeah? and it's eating the foam not as much and this is the White Knight's Squirts eating the foam quite nicely there so that was kind of a bummer that you couldn't just spray the grey down and have that as your like barrier to protect the bare foam if you needed to uh, so what I decided to do is anywhere that I have bare foam, which is usually underneath the um, so under there, it's just going to be the yellow color of the foam there for this one, unfortunately. But what I decided to do in future is brush on a bit of this enamel paint can paint, and then that will be the barrier for bare foam. So just on the places that are bare foam, I'll put that down first. And here's a test for that. Hang on, this is what we're looking at. Alright, so you can see that there's a bit of white area in the middle. That is the paint can. What am I calling that paint can? They're all cans, aren't they? Brushed on paint, you know. And then I've sprayed over that white with yellow. That yellow. And you can see that in the middle there it's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's perfectly fine there. But at the edges where it wasn't covered with the white first, it's starting to, to eat into that. Uh, so that was just a test of being a barrier. And I think I did another one, another one on the back, and that works quite nicely. Um, so this horrible bit here was, um, I think that was this clear one there, clear gloss. That's that one there. And I haven't tried this primer flat white here. I only just got this a couple of days ago, but I'll try that on something. Um, but what I've decided to do in the future is mostly just use grey. Um, now it is nice to have a colourful plane, I think, but like I said, I'm not fussy about this. I just want to protect it from the UV uh, radiation and stuff. So what I'm going to do is use one of these two here, whichever one happens to be cheaper, if they're different prices at the shop. And my planes are all just going to be grey for the most part, uh, with the exception of Home Slice 4, which will be mostly white, and the Farm Hopper, which I've already painted with a bit of yellow and white. But anyway, in the future, this is what I'm going to go with, and that will leave us with something like this. So that's Home Slice 3. Uh, if you ask me, it looks kind of nice. 
So I don't mind at all that it's like that. And one really neat thing about these primers, especially these, these two here, it's just so pleasant to paint them on because it's the exact opposite of the problem that I was having with this, where you just spray and spray, and the color just doesn't seem to stick on there very well. But with these two, it, a very small amount of paint seems to cover and block in the surface very nicely. So it's very pleasant to use. Um, it does sort of rub off quite a lot, very easily. So if I was to go over there and just sort of rub my hand on that, I'd get gray all over my fingers quite easily. Um, so what I think I'll do is go with this as a first coat, and then I'll put some of this clear on top of it, just as a bit more of protection. So when you're landing and you're rubbing along on the grass, you're not going to be rubbing the gray off too much. So this wing here, I think I'll revert that to the primer gray because this, this wing here is um, for that plane there. And for these two planes, I'm thinking of selling these two there. So I'll sell that one as it is, obviously it's already painted. But this one, now that I've seen what I've seen, I think I'll just leave that as primer gray with no clear coat. And whoever buys it will then quite easily be able to change it to whatever color they prefer. Seems like it's always good to test things a little bit before you try them because one thing I discovered with having the gray primer underneath the color that you want to be the final color, sometimes it depends on the final color to how well it's going to cover the gray. And this is yellow over gray directly. And this is yellow over white over gray. Uh, so it went gray, white, yellow. And this looks a lot better. Probably on camera it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but um, it was also a lot easier to do. Like I say, when you spray it, a small amount of spray seems to fill in the color very nicely if you go gray, white, yellow, rather than just gray, yellow. Oh yeah, and along the way I discovered this stuff which was just called painter's tape, I think. It's very cheap. It was only like four dollars for twice this much. I'm already halfway through this roll. But I started off using sellotape and it works, but um, I think it's a little bit risky if the paint's not quite cured, it pulls it up. I haven't had that problem actually, because I've left everything that I've done so far, I've left for at least like a couple of days before I tried to do anything else with it. But this one sticks just enough to block the edge, like make a sharp edge, but no more. And it's very easy to pull off and it's just the perfect thing. So um, if you can find something like this around, definitely use that instead of sellotape. Now we should probably have a look at this too. This is the farm hopper wing. And this was grey, then white, and then yellow. Um, so three coats, well, one coat with is grey, two coats with is white, three coats with is yellow. And unfortunately, it put the weight up quite a bit, almost 80 grams if my memory is correct. Unfortunately, I didn't note down what the weight was before, but just from memory, I think it's added 80 grams. So it's 350 grams, now it's 430. So, uh, yeah, that's one reason I don't want to be doing too many coats, and why I'm just going to stick to primer and then clear or maybe just primer in the case of something like this where this is not going to be rubbing on the ground much uh, versus this which will be rubbing on the ground. So there's that to keep in mind. Um, but another thing that this particular piece illustrates quite well is the result you get where the glass has been put down nicely. It looks, it just looks great there. I'm trying to get a bit of a reflection here so you can you can just sort of see the pattern of the glass a little bit. Oh here we go. You can see it better when there's a uh, slightly less glossy surface, but it looks looks fantastic in some parts. And then you have, uh, mm, doesn't show up too well, here we go, here we go, look at that. So again, you have this problem where even though there's three coats on here, it's because this area of glass was a little bit dry, I think is the problem. You just can't, it's like the preacher says, you can't spray the grey away, you know, it just sort of stays in there somehow. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just another thing to keep in mind. Now I probably could have, um, if I did two coats of primer and a bit of sanding and stuff like that, I could probably have done that, but I don't want to sand this too much because it's only a, a very thin layer of glass, it's 50 grams per square metre, very thin, and if you break through the glass while you're sanding, which I think would be quite easy, then there's not really much point of having put the glass on. Uh, of course, something like this looks pretty terrible too. Um, but yeah, whatever, I'm not too worried about that. Oh, and finally, I just was going to compare what we look, uh, what it looks like when you put the gloss 
over the primer, which is like that. So that's what I'd be doing on somewhere that's going to be rubbing on the ground, like that. So it's really shiny compared to this, which is not so much. Uh, yeah, oh, and this clear, by the way, another thing I should point out, this clear says they're UV resistant. So I'm just sort of wondering if it's possible that if you wanted to preserve the original look, like the just the bare foam look, so that you could see all the slices and everything and see how the plane was made and all the plywood bits in there. So there's a plywood piece here that's covered up, we can't see that. But if you wanted to see all the like skeleton kind of uh, features of the plane, I'm kind of wondering if just putting one single coat of this on might be enough to do it, possibly. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Um, probably wasn't very interesting to a lot of people, but if there's any other clueless noobs out there like me, hopefully something here was uh, informative. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.